Hello, good morning. I'm Conrad Montero. If you still remember, I'm I'm your reviewer in drying. Uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss bleaching. So, uh, in the first part, uh, I'm going to discuss the mechanism and the different equipments used for leaching. And then we'll, we'll try to solve um, several problems in leaching. So we'll start with single stage and then <clears throat> uh, we're, we're going to continue with uh, several uh, end stages leaching, no? Yung case one and case two. And then the last problem will be we'll deal with, uh, with two stage leaching. <clears throat> okay, so let me share you the, uh, the PowerPoint. So application and leaching, uh, you will see <clears throat> as we discussed this, you know, uh, sa, sa mining, you know, when, when you want to produce gold. So <clears throat> yung gold ore, nililich siya, no? To, to extract the gold from the ore. Copper, okay? Tapos sa Parma, <clears throat> sa Parma, most of the active ingredients ng Parma na source from, from plants, no, from leaves, from roots, leaching din yung ginagamit. Uh, of course, coffee, no, instant coffee production, tea, uh, oils, no, leaching din yun. <clears throat> okay. So, ito yung mga application ng leaching, ano? So, leaching of metal. So, as I mentioned earlier, yung gold is leached using aqueous sodium cyanide solution. Kasi if you still remember, <clears throat> uh, gold is uh, quite difficult to to dissolve. No? Sa laboratory, di ba? Aquarihia nga lang yun. Aquarihia is concentrated HCl plus concentrated nitric acid bago mo matunog ang gold. So, it's just very fortunate na Earlier, they discovered that gold is soluble in sodium cyanide solution. Marami, may, marami tayong mines ng gold sa Philippines. So that's why marami nagkalat na sodium cyanide solution. Ha? Yan yung nakakalasan. <clears throat> um, why do we need to dissolve gold in the first place into liquid? Kasi, di ba ang next part after after solution is electrolysis para ma-purify yung metal. So sa electrolysis kasi kailangan liquid. So that's why you need to you need to produce a solution, ano? Ganun lang naman yung basic. Tapos ayun, copper naman mas simple. Ano, copper is leached using sulfuric acid solution. So pag pag tinin pag chinek niyo sa YouTube, makikita niyo they maano kasi to eh mabagal, matagal na. Matagal bago ma-dissolve yung gold sa sodium cyanide. So, ang general operation nito, batch. So, they, they probably, probably pwedeng gumawa ng malalaking tank. Pero mas, if, mas, ano ata, mas economical pag ang ginagawa nila, yun mismong lupa sa bundok, yun mismo yung hinuhukay nila. Ano? Yun na mismo yung nagiging tank. Ewan ko lang kung nilalagay nila lang para semento, para may lining. Tapos doon nila nilalagay yung course, pati yung sodium cyanide solution. Kasi kailangan, syempre, pag matagal, relatively malaki yung tank, ano, batch yung operation. <clears throat> okay? okay? So that's one example. <clears throat> um, this is the interesting reaction, no? That is involved in, in gold solution, ano? So when you play sodium cyanide, Tapos meron kayong gold sa ore. Remember, gold is a noble metal. 
So in nature, gold talaga yan. Ano? Ano, nakikita niyo sa mga sine, di ba? Kulay yellow. Uh, it, it seldom form any compound. Talagang pure gold yan. No? Tapos, as you can see, the reaction involves oxygen and water. And then you're going to form sodium gold cyanide complex. So itong, itong ano, syempre all, all sorts of sodium are soluble. So, ito yun. Ito yung natutunod dun sa cyanide solution. Ano? Okay? So, this is the Eisner reaction. So, actually, nakadiscover nito is nung, nung process is si John Stewart MacArthur nung 1886. So, probably your question is bakit kay Eisner pinangalan? Probably si Eisner yung chemist. No? Siya yung uh, nag-specify nitong reaction. Okay, uh, next is, next application is leaching of biological substances. Halimbawa, uh, instant copy production. Siyempre, alam niyo naman, ano, paano gumawa ng uh, instant copy? You need to have some solubles, di ba? Uh, first, you have the copy beans, tapos uh, imimil niyo yung, i-roast niyo muna pala, tapos imimil niyo yung copy bean, no? Tapos, yun, water lang naman yung pang-extract yan, hot water makukuha nyo na yung solubles. Yun yung solubles na yun. Probably nilalagyan nila siguro ng starch. Sana to, to produce your instant coffee. Yung ginagamit sa 3-in-1. Instant coffee. Nestle. No? Sa tea din, siyempre, yung tea, alimbawa, C2, mga ganun. Ano? They, they just simply, ginagawa natin ito sa lab, di ba? In order to extract caffeine. Ganun din. Ano? Displace hot water and then you can extract caffeine and all the other uh, soluble component ng tea leaves. And then oils. Oils from peanuts, etc. So actually sa Philippines, ang mas common sa atin ay yung uh, copra, yung galing sa coconut. Ano? Coconut oil. So ang process doon, dinadry muna yung coconut meat. Tapos probably uh, inipiga nila, ano? pinipiga mo na nila sa so, may makukuha ang oil after pressing no pero actually marami pang matitira marami pang matitira so the next step is leaching using hexane so this is one uh, product that uses leaching yung mga vegetable oils and of course pharmaceutical product so nung nung college kami kasi ginagamit namin macmurray so sabi ni McMurray, um 50% pa rin daw no Those at least sa ginagamit naming edition noon pinakalaw ko noon late sa edition ng McMurray. so ginagamit naming edition noon ano lang na <laughs> mga 2007 din na um sa so ginagamit naming edition sabi ni McMurray, 50% pa daw ng pharmaceutical product are uh, extracted from natural source so kung hindi sila sinisintesize sa laboratory Halimbawa yung mga vitamin B, B1, B2, malalaki kasi yun eh. So, uneconomical pag sinintesize yun sa laboratory. So generally, in-extract lang siya sa mga plant materials like leaves, roots, or barks. So yun, syempre, may imagine nyo naman, basically, i-dry nyo lang muna yung, yung plant material. Pag na-dry na, imi-mill. No? After milling yun, pwede nang ma-extract. Ano? We will talk about the process later. Okay. And then rate determining step. You familiar with the rate determining step or RDS? So, yung yung ano kasi yung mechanism, yung mechanism ng uh, leaching, marami siyang steps. No? Una muna mababasa mo na yung yung particle yung yung solid mababasa mo na yung solid tapos pangalawa magpe-penetrate yung solvent papunta dun sa sa loob ng particle no ng new particle tapos pangatlo madi-dissolve yung yung ini-extract natin ano yung solute ang tawag natin doon madi-dissolve yung solute doon sa extract tapos pang-apat magdi-diffuse yung solution papunta dun sa surface and then panglima Pag, nasa solute, pag yung solution nandun sa surface ng particle, 
pupunta siya doon sa bulk ng ng ano ng solvent. Okay? So ganun yung mechanism ng leaching. And then it's quite important to determine kung gaano katagal magi-stay doon sa tangke, yung residence time niya, ha? Kung gaano katagal yung residence time. So research shows na ang pinakamabagal doon sa limang steps is the diffusion of the solid, solute or the solution into the surface of the solid, no? This is generally the RDS or the rate determining step. Tandaan niyo pa naman yung concept ng rate determining step. So kasi yung yung rate determining step, ah uh, siya yung nagde-determine nung yun, yung, yung rate ng reaction kung gaano niya katagal na po-produce yung product, di ba? Siya yung pinakamabagal. So ito yung pinakamabagal. <clears throat> so ayan, tinatanong ito sa board exam kaya may mention ko dito. Multiple choice na. The diffusion of the solute into the surface of the solid is generally the RDS. Okay, so dalawang method ang ano, ang leaching operation. Um, the first one is batch. So ina-apply to sa ano no sa mining, ba, nag, nag uh, nililich ka ng copper o kaya ng gold, yun, batch yung operation na yun. And then the most common is continuous. So continuous generally done in counter current setup. <clears throat> uh, the rest ano yung bawa yung oil extraction, continuous yung ginagamit. Yun. Okay. Okay, so let's let's discuss some ano some <clears throat> Let's discuss some uh, equipment that is involved in leaching. So the first one is Bollman extractor. So yung Bollman extractor, this uses ano perforated basket. Nasa handbook naman 'to, ano. Uh, hanapin nyo lang yung leaching chapter 18 tapos nasa nakadrawing naman itong mga pati yung mga pangalan ito lumalabas kasi ito sa board exam tinatanong dinidescribe nila yan tapos sasabihin mo kung anong pangalan so yung ballman extractor uses perforated basket tapos umi meron ditong motor umiikot umiikot siya na tapos as you can see you introduce the raw material or the dry flakes right here <clears throat> pero as you can see the, the pure solvent is introduced right here so ano nangyayari, parang counter current ano uh, mag mag magro-rotate yung basket system ng clockwise tapos pagdating dito andito yung solvent okay so butas yung basket so the solvent will pass tapos uh, right here you will have a solution na medyo mababa pa yung concentration niya ng oil no so ang ang tawag sa solution ng oil at saka ng uh, solvent usually hexane yung solvent ano ay misila. So kasi mababa pa lang yung concentration dito, ang tawag natin dito ay half misila. Tapos as you can see, ito ini-spray siya dito sa portion na to. Okay? So mas makaka-extract pa siya ng mas maraming oil and then you have the full misila. Okay? So this is use this is known as the Bollman extractor. Okay? Perforated basket, half misila, full misila. <clears throat> Ito yung three-dimensional drawing ng ano, no? Bollman extractor para mas ma-imagine nyo. Ito yung mga perforated baskets. Yun nga lang in this, ato, in this drawing, dito in-introduce yung, ano, no? yung material, yung raw material. Tama, ganun din naman pala sa illustration ni Gene Coppes. Galing yung kay Gene Coppes. Dito rin yung illustration natin. Hindi lang pinakita dito na dito hindi introduce yung solvent. Ano? Okay. So next, we have the moving moving bed leaching. So the first example of moving bed leaching is Hilderbrand extractor. So sa Hilderbrand extractor, this particular extractor contains three, three screw type conveyor. Ito ano? One, two, three. Tapos as you can see, the pit is introduced in this area. Tapos Siyempre, this screw type conveyor will rotate and it will move the material, no, the raw material upwards in this direction. Tapos you introduce the solvent right here. So the solvent moves on the other direction, no, parang counter current. So as you can see, dito nandito dito yung oil and solvent. Dito yung, kasama dito yung extracted oil sa solvent. Ano? Tapos yung 
yung lead solid dito lalabas. <clears throat> so the three screw type conveyor is arranged in U shape and the solvent flows counter current. Okay, so this is the Helder brand extractor. Check nyo na lang sa ano. Hanapin nyo na lang ito sa ano, sa handbook, na sa handbook. Chapter 18. Maikli lang naman yung chapter 18. Browse, browse nyo yung chapter 18. Okay, and then finally, this is the thickener type. No? So yung, yung thickener type, <clears throat> ang, ang kanyang karakteristik, meron siyang ano, meron siyang thickener, slowly rotating rakes, ano? Meron siyang slowly rotating rakes dito sa sa bottom ng mga tanks, no? So, you introduce the solids on the last tank para counter current, ano? Tapos yung solution naman dito sa first tank. So, as you can see, uh, yung slurry on the bottoms is moved to the next tank using a pump, no? Punta sa susunod. Tapos, yun namang, ano, yun namang solution, okay, nag-overflow lang yan. Nag-overflow papunta doon. Usually, uh, pwedeng ano yan, magkakadikit. Ano, you might be asking, paano mag-overflow? Pero pwedeng mag magkakadikit yan, o pwede rin siguro merong piping system. Pero siya, mas matipid kung magkakadikit lang. Parang, parang sa ano, no? sa wastewater. Di ba sa wastewater may opening lang dito. Tapos yung kakadikit yung tank. So, pag, ano, mag-overflow, yung mga susunod na tank. Mag-overflow. No, ganyan lang yung system. Okay. So ito yung press solvent. Ito yung solid feeds. Tapos ito yung slowly rotating rate. This is known as thickener type pitching apparato. Okay, and then we're going to discuss the different assumptions, ano, in leaching. <coughs> so Sa calculation kasi, sa manual calculation, we're, we're just assuming na ano, ideal leaching para kaya natin i-calculate manually. No? Kasi pag hindi, nyo, pag hindi tayo nag-assume na uh, hindi natin in-assume itong mga to parang hindi kaya manually i-calculate yung ano. Especially the multi-stage. Ano? <clears throat> so the first assumption is an operating line equation is also the material balance line equation. Tandaan niyo pa ba yung concept ng operating line? <clears throat> Of course, yung material balance, mayroon ka mga makalimutan yun. Ano? Yung material balance, kung ano yung pumapasok, so, supposed to be yun din yung lalabas. Parang ganun lang. Ganun. So, ang, ang material balance, <coughs> if you still remember, <coughs> halimbawa ito yung ating leaching operation. Ano? Uh, <coughs> ito yung stage number one. Tapos, uh, ito yung operating line natin, yung kulay red. Ano? So, Kita nyo X3 and Y4. X3 and Y4. So ito yun, X3 and Y4. So yung bawat point, yung bawat point sa operating line, <clears throat> yung, yun yung concentration, no? Nung, <clears throat> alam nyo pa naman yung underflow at saka overflow, ano? Yung magkatapat na underflow at saka overflow in between, uh, in between, ano? In between stages of leaching. So yun, yung dalawa na to, yung magkatapat na to. So yung yung point na mabubuo nitong uh, magkatapat na concentrations na to, yun yung ginagamit na points ng operating line. No? Anyway, marireview din naman natin yung mamaya pag ano, pag kung na medyo nakalimutan nyo na. <coughs> when, when we go to calculation, um, sa distillation, mas madaling ma-imagine yan eh. So kung tandaan nyo pa yung distillation, di ba yung distillation may mga plates, no? May mga plates. <clears throat> so yung yung operating line, yun yung concentration ng vapor at saka liquid between plates. Di ba dalawang plates na magkatapat na ganyan? Ito yung sa taas, ito yung sa baba. So yung concentration ng vapor at saka yung liquid dun sa between two plates, yun yung ano, yun yung ginagamit sa operating line. So ganito rin, ganito rin dito, ano? Kasi parang ito yung isang plate, ito yung another plate. So yung concentration na lumalabas dito, no? L yung underflow niya, tapos yung overflow nito. Yung yung concentration ng dalawa na yun, yun yung ano, yun yung points ng operating line. <clears throat> okay. So going back to assumption number one, Pag parehas yung operating line equation at saka yung material balance line equation, ano yung consequence noon? Halimbawa, inassume natin parehas silang dalawa. 
So ang consequence nun, negligible ang losses. So ina-assume natin sa ideal leaching, walang losses. No? Of course, in real operation may losses. Pero siguro naman, ano yan, um, mga siguro less than, nung nagtrabaho ko sa industry, hindi yan, hindi yan lumalampas ng 5%. No? Kasama na lahat ng losses. Pag pagalimbawa nakapag-work kayo sa company. Tapos, ang dami-daming inefficient yun. Nako, hindi magtatagal yung operation. <laughs> Maghanap-hanap na kayo ng iba. <clears throat> Ganun yan. Yung, yung, at least yung napagtrabaho ko. And when I, when I work in Wyatt, sa so Wyatt, mga, palagi 90% yung efficiency namin doon. Hanggang ngayon. Andiyan dyan pa rin ang Wyatt. Ano? <clears throat> okay. So second, second assumption is the inert solid is in, insoluble in the solvent. So pag sinabi ng problem na 30% is inert solid sa sa feed, hanggang dun sa ano, you will have the same amount. Hanggang dun sa last stage, you will have the same amount. So hindi, hindi talaga siya matutuno dun sa solvent. Of course, pag alam nyo na naman na niching, ano, uh, alam nyo na naman na ang mangyayari dyan, may probability na sasama, sasama talaga yung solid dun sa solvent kahit hindi siya na-dissolve. Kung maga may probability na mag-overflow, halimbawa lalo na pag medyo uh, mababa yung density, ano, magpo-float siya. May, may tendency talagang ganun. So sa ideal leaching, i-assume natin, negligible yun. Or wala talaga. <clears throat> okay, number three assumption. All the solute is dissolved by the solvent in the first stage. <clears throat> okay. Um, You might be asking this question. Bakit pag in natin yung number 3, all the solute is dissolved by the solvent in the first stage, bakit kailangan pa natin magdagdag ng second stage, third stage, fourth stage, no? 30 stages, bakit kailangan pa natin magdagdag ng ganun? Okay? So kasi kung naalala nyo, meron kasing nare-retain yung solid na solution. Okay? Although lahat ng solute na dissolve dun pa lang sa first stage, kaya lang, yung solid, yung inert solid, may nare-retain siyang solution. Hindi siya matutuyo sa operation. So kaya significant pa rin yung amount ng solute na may iwan doon sa solid. Kaya kailangan yung second stage, third stage, etc. Na? Pero ang assumption natin dito, doon pa lang sa first stage, dissolve na lahat ng solute. Kung may makikita niyo yung consequence ng assumption na yun. <clears throat> Siyempre yung assumption na yun, mas ano yan, mas... Uh, yung kanyang epekto, alam mo, single stage, ano? So, pag single stage, uh, magagamit, magagamit yung ano na yun, yung assumption na yun. <clears throat> Number four, <clears throat> the time is sufficient for all solute to dissolve in the first stage. Although, hindi na natin i-discuss yung ano na yan, yung concept na yan, yung nakakalculate ng time, kung gaano katagal mag stay yung material dun sa tank, no? Kasi ano naman eh, sinabi naman ni Gene Coplis na most of the time naman, experimental yan. So kumbaga, susubukan nyo muna. Sinusubukan na lang, gusto nyo mag-design ng leaching process, tapos wala, wala kayong masyadong data. You need to find out the, the residence time through experiment, no? Empirical yan kung gaano katagal yung residence time niya doon sa ano. So, ang i-assume na lang natin, i-assume na lang natin yung yung residence time na i-alat natin sa bawat states ay sufficient, ano? Para ma-dissolve lahat yung solute sa first stage pa lang. The time is sufficient for all solute to dissolve in the first stage. <clears throat> okay, number five. <clears throat> no solute remains adsorbed by the inert solid in the first stage. So, ang consequence nito, Uh, the concentration of the solution leaving the solid is equal to the concentration of the solid. Solution adhering to the solid. Okay? So, important ito. Ano? Yes. Itong number 5, ito yung pinaka-importante assumption ng, ng leaching. Ideal leaching. Ha? Uh, yung concentration na lumalabas sa isang stage, whether sa overflow or sa underflow, parehas lang. Equal yung concentration nila. Kasi basically, anong nangyari dyan, you have the same solution. Nagkahiwalay lang. Yung isa nag-overflow, yung isa sumama dun sa solid. Sa underflow. No? Handaan nyo pa? So, ito yung pinaka-importanting assumption. So, 
Let me annotate this. It's important yun. Ito, halimbawa ito yung stage. No? So, we usually call this L sub O. Tapos ito L sub 1. Tandaan nyo pa yung mga notations sa leaching. This is B sub 2. B sub 2. This is B sub 1. Halimbawa ang concentration ng B sub 1, Y sub 1. Tapos ang concentration ng L1, I, X1. No? So, ang sinasabi ng idea leaching assumption uh, y1 is equals to x1 okay and yung pinaka importanteng assumption <clears throat> so number 6 it is not possible to remove all the liquid from the solid no hindi mo talaga matutuyo yan parang hindi economical yan ano ang power ng pipigain mo pipigain mo yung solid para makuha mo lahat yung so hindi ganun usually yung Probably, yeah. ano kasi yan, empirical lang, hindi nila talaga magawa sa industry. So, kaya ganito yung ginawang ano, calculation. <clears throat> okay? So, I hope natatandaan nyo na yung mga ano na, uh, yung mga assumption natin. Yung ideal leaching assumption. Okay, so ang gagamitin kong convention ay yung sa handbook, no? So, underflow. Underflow, ito yan, itong LO at saka yung L1. Yung may kasamang solid, inert solid, ano? Yan yung underflow. Underflow is the solid liquid stream. Ito, LO, L1. Also known as the slurry stream. Tapos, yung concentration nito, Sa convention ng handbook ay uh, ang symbol niya ay X. X1, X2, X3, no? X sa handbook. Kasi kay Gene Coplis, ito yung Y niya. Kaya lang, syempre, handbook yung mabubuksan natin sa board exam. Tapos later gagamit tayo nung equation. Handbook din yung ating mabubuksan na reference kung saka na makalimutan niya equation. So kaya handbook yung napili kong convention. Ha? <clears throat> Okay, pag, pag makalimutan nyo ang underflow, madali lang namang isipin, ano lang sa ilalim, siya may solid, one, 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 one thing, ano? Pero ako, ginagamit ko ditong mnemonics ay US, underflow, solid, no? Kasi yung isa ay overflow. <clears throat> yung overflow, yung overflow naman, ito yung oil solvent solution. So, puro liquid to, solution siya. Uh, ang concentration, uh, by convention, ang concentration niya ay Y. Okay? So, ito yun. Ano? Itong B2, tsaka itong B1, tapos yung kanyang concentration. By convention is Y1. <clears throat> okay? Okay, so let's 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 try to solve this uh, problem. So this is from the uh, UP Diliman quiz contest. You know, this is a this is an interesting problem from ano. Uh, this is a single stage problem, you know, for leaching. So, paano ba sinosolve ang leaching problem? Generally, ang first step is uh, you need to calculate L, L1, no? yung underflow. So, how do you calculate the underflow? <clears throat> Usually, may given, na, ano, may given na retention. So, yung retention, ang unit usually nun ay uh, kilogram solution retained per kilogram inert solid. No? So, kailangan mo lamang yung value ng inert solid. Usually naman given yung percentage ng inert solid sa feed. So, just determine the weight of the inert solid. Tapos, i-multiply nyo yung retention. Makukuha nyo na yung L1. 
So take note, remember that yung L1, uh, yung solution lang na na-retain. Hindi kasama yung inert solid. No? So yun yung first step. Tapos pag nakuha nyo na yung L, kasi ano naman yun, eh, kung natatandaan nyo pa, kahit naman multi-stage, ano? yung L1, L2, L3, L4, equal lamang sila. Kasi usually ganun yung case. Ano? So pag nasolve mo yung L1, solve mo na rin lahat hanggang L sub N. Okay. Tapos susunod doon, mag-overall mass balance lang. So pag nag-overall mass balance, generally na so solve yung B, B1. No? Yung solvent, yung solution sa taas, yung, yung overflow. Pag nag-overall mass balance. And then pag nasolve na yung B1, nag-oil balance lang. Parang usual ano rin lang. Ano? Actually parang check out din lang siya. Ang nadagdag lang dito, yung first step lang. Nakakalculate kasi muna, muna tayo ng L1 using the retention M. Tandaan nyo pa? Yun, ganun lang naman. Ano? So usually, ang kay Jean Coplis, ang usual question is what is L1, what is B1? Pag single stage, ano? what is L1, what is B1? Uh, what is the value of Y1 and X1? Yung concentrations. Ha? Okay, so let's let's try this problem. So neem oil is a traditional plant product which possesses spermicidal properties. Kapatay ng sperm, ano? A group of students working on their investigatory project wanted to test how effective the said oil was as a contraceptive. Diba? Interesting, ano? By using it as a component for a contraceptive. <clears throat> ano kaya nila ginawa ito? The students were able to gather 5 kg of neem tree seeds that contain 30% of soluble oil okay, and 70% of inert solid. And they decided to use 5.0 kg of pure hexane to extract the oil. Imagine nyo naman yung problem, ano? So, usually ganyan. Alam nyo kung ilan yung percentage ng oil, alam nyo kung ilan yung percentage ng solid, alam nyo kung gaano kadami yung raw material nyo, alam nyo kung gaano karami yung solvent. O, di ba? Practical naman, ano? Alam nyo naman dapat lahat yun. Tapos, ang question is, what percentage of oil will they be able to recover given that the ratio of the liquid to solid components in the underflow is 0.60? So, itong 0.60 na to, ito yung sinasabi kong sa inyong retention. Ano? So, ang, you can interpret this kasi ratio siya ng liquid to solid as you're going to get 0.6 kilogram of solution or 0.6 kilogram of solution will be retained for every uh, kilogram of inert solid. Ganun yung interpretation ng 0.6. So assume ideally, Ching, so lahat ng assumption natin valid, Y1 is equals to X1 and answer in four significant figures. Okay, so that, let me share you a whiteboard para masolve natin. Ano? <clears throat> So let's let's start by drawing the system. Tandaan niyo naman yung given, di ba? Madali lang naman. Uh, 5 kg, 5 kg tapos 30% yung oil. Yan lang naman yan. <clears throat> drawing lang muna natin yung system. Tandaan niyo pa ba chikalt no? Parang chikalt din lang to, di ba? Uh, steps ng chikalt, di ba? Read the problem, understand the problem. Second stage, uh, draw the schematic diagram. And then third stage, third step, uh, Set up the equations. Solve the required. Diba? So, ito yung ang ating uh, conventional symbol ay L sub O. Tapos ito yung L1. No? Ito yung, ito yung leaching tank. So ito B2. Ito B1. No? Tapos ito concentration nito by convention X1. Ito by conversion ay Y1. Okay? So sabi ko nga sa inyo, leaching generally, sinosolve muna ay L1. How do we solve L1? Alagyan natin yung mga given. Ano? This is 5 kg. Ito yung seeds. So, ang bito natin yung 5 kg hexane. Okay? Ito 30% oil. Yung 5 kg seeds. 
Okay? So in order to solve L1, sabi ko nga sa inyo, gagawin din lang natin yung retention. So meron kasi tayong given na 60%, ano 0.6? 0.6 uh, kilogram solution is retained for every kilogram of inert solid. Imagine nyo na, di ba? Kailangan nyo lang yung value ng inert solid. Eh, sorry. Inert solid. Solution. Inert, inert na lang. Okay na yan. Okay. So... So, mumultiply na lang natin ito ng ano, nung weight ng inert. So, ang weight ng inert ay you have 5 kilogram times 70%. Ano? Okay. So, ang L1 is around Pwede nyo akong sabayan habang nanonood kayo ng video para hindi kayo ma-board. Ano? Kasi pag wala kasing ginagawa na yun nakakainip eh. So, Probably kuha kayo ng calculator habang nanonood kayo ng video para ano. Total ako naman. Nagka-calculator din ako eh. I'm going to give you time para ano. Para hindi kayo mainit. Ah, hindi kasi yung isang problema dyan. No? Pag nanonood ako ng zoom, okay, init na init ako. Oh. 2.1 kilogram yung L1. Ano? So solution to, di ba? Mahalaga kasi yan. Yung susunod na step, generally yung susunod na step, overall mass balance. So, pag nag-overall mass balance kayo, usually nandito, nandito yung error eh. <clears throat> pag nag-overall mass balance kayo, uh, huwag nyo isasama yung solid. Actually, pwede nyo rin isama, kaya lang ahaba. Tandaan nyo pa, mahaba kasi yung solution. So, kasi yung solid naman, yung inert solid naman, ano lang, lam lampasan din lang siya. No? Pag papasok siya, tapos lalabas din lang siya. So, ang ginagawa, para mas mabilis, hindi na sinasama yung solid. Yung solution lang. No? So pag hindi nyo sinama yung solid, uh, yung, yung seeds, yung 5 kg seeds, hindi siya mismo yung involved sa overall mass balance. Ang involved lang natin yung 30% oil lang ng 5 kg. Diba? Ganun, ganun yun. Ganun yung ginagawang shortcut dito. So overall mass balance, yung 5 kg ng seeds, yung oil lang yung isasama nyo sa overall mass balance. So, times 0.3. Okay? Plus, yung B2 sa taas, yung 5 kg ng hexane. I hope you can follow. Tapos, yung lumalabas, yung L1, alam na natin yung L1 ay 2.1 kg solution. Tapos, plus yung B1. So, as you can see, we can... We can at this point, you can solve B1. So, B1 is 5 times 0.3 plus 5 minus 2.1. So, we have 4.4. Ano? We have 4.4. Kilogram. Okay. <clears throat> so, meron na tayong L1 at saka B1. <clears throat> Imagine ninyo, papan ang tinatanong kasi dito is uh, ilang percentage daw ng oil yung na-extract. So how are we going to solve that? So basically, you, you can solve that by, by, by binding B1, Y1. No? Kasi when you, when you divide the product of B1 and Y1 with the total oil that enters, the initial oil that enters, 30% of 5 kg, <clears throat> you're going to get the amount, the percentage of ano, oil extracted. So ang, ang kailangan nyo pang isolve dito, before you go to the final, that final step is Y1. So, ang Y1 naman at saka X1 equal. So, generally, ang third step sa leaching, mag-oil balance kayo. No? So, ang first step, calculate ng L, L1, or L, generally L, ano? Ito yung first step. Ang second step is overall mass balance. Tapos, ang third step ay oil balance. So, yun, yun yung general step sa, ano, sa leaching solution. Oil balance. So, pag nag-oil balance kayo, you have 5 kilogram 
times 0.3. Yung pumapasok. Yung hexane naman, wala siyang oil. Tapos, di ba, x1 at saka L, x1 at saka y1 equal lang naman. No, no? So, L1 is 2.1. Okay? Times, times, uh, 2.1 times x1. You can use x1. You can use y1. Y1 na lang. Ano? Y1 plus, kasi equal lang naman silang dalawa, di ba? Plus, b1 is 4.4. So, y1 din. And then, try to solve y1 using your calculator. So, 5 times 0.3 2.1 alpha x plus 4.4 Alpha X. Kuha kayong calculator, ha? So, I, I'm getting something like ano, 0 0.230769. So, dagdagan nyo na kasi for significant figure yung, o oh, i-store nyo na lang sa memory, ano? Store nyo sa memory yung, yung 0, Y1 is 0.230769. Store nyo sa memory. Yan. Store nyo siya. Tapos, in order to calculate the percentage extracted, okay, this is basically B1 times Y1, okay, all over 5, yung original weight, ano? Uh, 5 kilogram times 0.3. Ito yung weight ng oil na na-extract, tapos ito yung initial weight ng oil. Total weight ng oil, ano? tapos times 100%. Ngayon lang naman yan. <clears throat> so, if we're going to substitute yung mga bags na nakuha natin, uh, B1 is 4.4 plus yung in-store natin na 0 0.23 etc. Tapos divided by 5 times 0.3. Tapos times 100%. You're supposed to get... Oh, Wala kayong calculator. Sixty-seven point sixty-nine percent. Nakuha niyo? You're supposed to get 67.69%. Okay? So let me share you the, again the, uh, the PowerPoint. So, tapos PowerPoint. Hindi yung answer, no? 67.69%. Okay. So, hinto muna tayo dito. Uh, stretch, stretch muna kayo. Pahinga muna kayo. Tapos, yung susunod na video, uh, we're going to discuss multi-stage, no? Multi-stage leaching at saka yung two-stage leaching. So, stretch, stretch muna kayo para konti. Tapos, balik agad ulit kayo, no? Panarin yung second, second part. <coughs>